Hey, it's Planks again. Uh, since I did my first three videos of a tech primer for ESA, I've been thinking that I wanted to do one more, which is a basic introduction to how the mixer is going to work. Now, like I explained in one of my videos before, you're going to be learning how to operate the mixer and not exactly how the mixer works. However, there's a few principles you need to get your head around in order to understand what you're changing. The, f the first principle is that this mixer has five main outputs and these are shown below me in the middle box. Um, this uses a function called sends on fader. So the, the main stream mix and it's also sent out to the hosts and the speakers and so on and so forth is the home mix. When you press the home button, you have access to three layers below it. This is layer one to 16, layer one, 17 to 32, and the master layer. Ignore remote, we don't have an extra desk that would enable the remote layer to work. The reason why we have three pages of layers is because this is a compact mixer. It only has 16 fader channels. However, it has 32 logical inputs and 16 logical outputs, which means that these faders need reused three times. So if you press the one to 16 button, you're controlling faders one to 16. If you press the 17 to 32 button, you're controlling faders 17 to 32. And if you press the master button, you're controlling the 16 outputs on the board. Now that's 16 stereo channels on the board, so a lot of them are paired. So it's, uh, I think it's only eight or nine we actually use, eight or nine logical outputs. Anyway, by the by. So say you want to turn up or turn down the game sound on the stream. You need to go on the home fader mode, and then you need to go on the appropriate layer either 1 to 16 or 17 to 32, which is documented in my Google Doc. It's also documented on the channel strip, which on the physical mixer is just a bit of masking tape below all the faders that has the function of each fader in all three layer modes. What we then have is the aux fader modes, the aux sends on fader. And these are all paired. So um, in a mixer like this, to create a stereo channel, you pair two mono channels. I hope that's a straightforward enough concept. So if you press aux one, it also changes aux two. If you press aux three, it also changes aux four and so on. So the first pair is headset one. The second pair is headset two, the third pair is headset three, and the fourth pair is headset four. So if you press aux one, the faders change into the mode where you're no longer adjusting what goes to stream, you're adjusting what goes to the individual runner or commentator headsets. Other than that, the layers now work the same. Say you want to change the consoles, you're in the first layer. Say you want to change the volume of the microphones in their headset, you're in the second layer. And the master layer is disabled on the aux channels. So you only need to worry about these two channels. That pretty much goes over the way the mixer is going to work. Other than that, it functions relatively similar, sorry, you need to operate it as an analog mixer. It's just you've got five different mixes to mix analogly, if that makes sense. When you're wanting to set up a run, what you're going to need to do a lot is to listen to channels other than the master channel or the home channel. So there's this button, it's below the mixer logo. Unfortunately, I can't point 
on OBS the way I've got it set up now. Um, it cancels pre-fade listen. So when this doesn't apply, what you're listening to in the headset is what's going to stream. If you want to listen to what's going to the runner one to four headsets, or say you even want to listen to what's going to the speakers specifically, what you can do is change to pre-fade listen mode. And what pre-fade listen mode does is it lets you listen to either one specific input or one specific output or a combination depending on how many buttons you press. So most of the time, if you're using pre-fade, you're gonna be using it to check what's coming in on a specific input or output and then canceling out of it. The way you go into this mode is to listen to an output, which is what you're gonna be doing most of the time. You want to click the home button on the fader mode panel, and then you want to click the master layer on the layer panel. And this gives you on your faders, it loads up all the outputs. Now, if you press the solo button on any given output here, which is in my bottom right down here, you begin to listen to the individual output. And during setup, you'll be doing this a lot because during setup, you need to speak to the runner using the talkback function that we've got set up. This doesn't go to stream at all. This only goes to the runners and you need to listen to what the runner's listening to. So the, the basic process is we'll begin to listen to headset one, we'll turn up the microphone and now we can talk to headset one and headset one can talk to us and it doesn't go to stream. And what we need to do is talk to the runner and say, can you hear your game sound? This is kind of a trick question because you can hear if they can hear their game sound, but they might want it turned up or turned down. If they can hear the game sound and you can't, or rather if you can hear the game sound and they can't, it's likely that their headphones are just turned up too far on the headphone amp. Uh, or turn down too far on the headphone amp. And this is something that shouldn't be adjusted, but no doubt at some point will be adjusted by some idiot during ESA. Before ESA, what I'm gonna try and do is endeavor to match the headphone amp to the speakers, uh, to the headphones at tech, so that you're listening to pretty much the same signal. If that's not the problem, everything's broken and the marathon's cancelled. So one thing you're also doing uh, when you're talking to the runner, you're also getting a feel for how loud their voice is relative to the game sound. Um, the defaults that I've got set up in the mixer should be pretty good for someone who speaks normally roughly like myself. If someone is particularly loud or bold or has a great stage voice, um, for example, someone who comes to mind from the GDQs is Spike Vegeta. You might need to turn them down a bit. Um, but you would do this on the, the home fader mode rather than the aux fader mode because they're going to be loud for everybody. Then what you do is you repeat this process. So having set up the game sound at an appropriate level for headset one. You need to do this for headsets two, three, and four. There's not many three and four player races at ESA this year, but what I imagine will happen quite a lot is that we'll have four people on mics in total, four people on the couch or, uh, yeah. What this means is that you need to go into each individual headset for each run and turn on, uh, turn on the correct game sound source. This is a quick process, but you just need to remember to do it. Um, if you don't do it, you'll be reminded by the commentator shortly after the run begins, hey, I don't have game sound, by the way. By default, headset one gets rack one, 
headset 2 gets rack 2. So say you're using headset 2, but they're commentating rack 1, or they're doing co-op with rack 1. You just need to go into the headset 2 fader mode, the layer 1 to 16, which is where all the consoles are, and turn down uh, rack 2 and turn up rack 1. This is the mixer is going to be where most of the learning at ESA needs to come in. But we do not plan on changing this for any future event anytime soon. So any knowledge that you learn now, you can rely on coming back to next time and it will still be correct. So please, 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 if you have any questions or any need any advice on what's going on with this mixer come and ask me i'm the best guy to come to because i've done most of the theory crafting into this mixer Edinal's pretty good maxi's pretty good anyone who's been to the last couple of dream hacks has operated this mixer in this fashion so that's about it for this video um I hope this has been useful. I hope it's not been too much of a ramble. It's been a bit more detailed than the first three videos and involves some more abstract concepts that even for somebody who's worked with analog mixers for a long time might come as a bit of a, a bit of a difficult idea to understand. But trust me, this produces the best runner experience we can possibly give for those who are doing the runs at ESA and that's the most important thing and that's why we've gone down this route that we have so please trust me this is absolutely worth learning and once you do get your head around these basic functions that's when I could maybe start talking about why everything works as it does so uh Thank you very much for watching this video and if there's any more in the future please watch those as well and if you've not watched them already please go back and watch videos one two and three which are a bit more of a less technical explanation of what's happening at tech this year at esa 2017 thank you very much